Hello, my name is Jacqueline Paulson, and today I will be sharing with you my literacy autobiography. So as per the assignment instructions, I will be focusing on my um, literacy journey throughout middle and high school, but I think it's important to note the fact that I grew up in a family that encouraged reading from a very young age, and um, I have a mother that is a teacher, so reading was one of her passions and was often um, encouraged as a pastime re uh, reading for fun. So. Some of the books that I remember fondly include The Brown Bear, Good Night Moon, Rainbow Fish, Madeline, Charlotte's Web. These are all fond memories of me and my family reading together at night before bed and encouraged me to love reading from a very young age. I got a little bit older and could read on my own independently. I remember some of my favorite books being series books, including Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Scary Stories Tell in the Dark was one of my favorites, Goosebumps, Sideways Stories from Wayside School, Series of an Unfortunate Events, Babysitter's Club, Amelia Batilia, all these were some of my favorite and I remember such happy memories reading them as a child. We frequented the library um, as a family. We would go on weekends and all had library cards and it was something really fun we would do together. So I know this was encouraging in my road to literacy to love reading and get excited about it and have my own personal library card that belonged to me so I could decide what books to um, invest my time in and what I wanted to read for fun. So I know this really encouraged me to read often and enjoy it and look at it as something that was a fun experience. And um, I also attribute this to me being a very fast reader. Uh, it was something that I could do easily and efficiently, and that was and still is one of my favorite things, being able to master something and become very efficient at it. So I know this encouraged me to read a lot as well. I got into middle school, and my middle school happened to be located directly across from the Clovis Branch Library. And most days after school, um, I would go and walk directly to the library after school and get my homework done and then spend sometimes, you know, an hour or so reading for fun and picking out the books I would take um, home, on, you know, on check them out with my library card. And this was just so fun. I remember being excited to check out the books and return them and thought it was just the coolest thing at that age. And even into middle school, really enjoyed being able to be that close and independently walk over there and have my own personal free time to decide what I wanted to read and what I was interested in and just explore the library. I'm fascinated with libraries and have been from a, a young age. And I know this encouraged me to read a lot and enjoy reading. And um, something that, you know, resonated, resonated with me from the key reading um, from the passage and article, Reading as Situated Language, they say that what appears to cause enhanced school-based verbal abilities are family, community, and school language environments in which children interact intensively with adults and more advanced peers and experience cognitively challenging talk and text on sustained, sustained topics in different genres of oral and written language. So when I think of this, I think about the fact that just the environment I was in as a young child really encouraged reading and to use my imagination in reading to enjoy the experience and um, a tribute to my literacy. Much like a lot of the literacy autobiographies I have read in the past for different school assignments and you know speaking with my peers, Harry Potter is the first memory I have really of being absolutely in love with a storyline of characters. I have like I mentioned, always been interested in series books and following the characters throughout journey. But Harry Potter was the very first book series that I just could not get enough of. I was absolutely obsessed, still am to this day, with characters and the storyline. And um, I love to develop literacy this way through um, the blogs and vlogs I regularly watch now 
being that there's a characters and a sequence of events, that's something I really connect to, being able to follow the storyline of certain characters that you fall in love with and become invested in while reading and transport yourself to that character and put yourself in their sh in their shoes. I think this um, is one of the facets of reading that I really enjoy. In the FEAR article, it talks about the importance of the act of reading and reading the world precedes reading the word and the subsequent reading of the word cannot dispense with continually reading the world. Language and reality are dynamically intertwined and the understanding attained by critical reading of a text implies perceiving the relationship between text and context. And I've always been obsessed with like magic and things like that. So just the characters and I was kind of around the same age as them and I just would fast, you know, fantasize about how cool it would be to go to Hogwarts and live that life and be magical. So it was something that I really enjoyed reading and a book series that I have read over and over and over. I can never get enough of it. I know I'll always read it and really fell in love with reading at this point, even more so. The memory I have from um, my middle school years is becoming very interested in reading books by the same author, different books by the same author. I remember being incredibly intrigued by the voice the author um, put, you know, portrayed through their words, the unique way that they said things, even though in a, it was a different story or a different book, it had the same vibe, if you will, or same tone of the author a lot of times. So anything by Nicholas Sparks, Walk to Remember, Notebook, Safe Haven, last song, I really enjoyed reading them. Also the concept of a love story as an adolescent girl, you know, I had my first boyfriend, I was just obsessed with the, um, the, the idea of love and falling in love and the story and feelings that go into that. So this was um, another memory I have of reading for enjoyment in middle school. Another interest of mine was I started to get very into reading magazines. Teen People, Seventeen, Cosmo Girl, Allure. I could not read enough magazines. I would read magazines at the library as well because they had a selection of them and it became something I gravitated to. I really liked reading about celebrities and their lives and just this form of print media with a lot of pictures, visuals going together um, with the you know written word really um, was something that fascinated me and something that I love to do. While reading the Guy article um, about the social world, I was intrigued by what he says about meaning and language is tied to people's experiences of situated action in the material and social world, and that certain at a certain developmental level, um, we have the capacity to distance ourselves from our own perspectives and internally simulate the perspectives of another person. And that way we're able to see how the words and grammar come to express those perspectives. So something my friends and I would often do to socially engage with each other as much as possible is write notes to each other back before the days of texting, the good old days. And I have now just binders and binders and so many thousands of written notes that we would write to each other with poems and just talking about anything and everything. Um, probably mostly inappropriate, to be honest, but me and all my friends would just write notes to each other all day. And I'm so glad I have these memories written down now to look back on. It's always fun to look through them with my friends when they come over, just about how different we thought back then and just really transport ourselves back to that time with these precious memories that we have written down. And it makes me kind of sad that now that kind of communication isn't really how, you know, students in middle and high school communicate. It's all through texting and that's not necessarily something that's saved, which might be a good thing depending on what you're saying. But I really am so glad that I developed my social literacy this way with my friends to really get to know each other and save it to look back upon and have those awesome memories. And I know this contributed heavily to how well I understood people and, you know, 
my friends, totally different backgrounds than me, totally different literacy journeys, but we were able to connect through these written letters to each other and constantly communicate while, of course, getting our homework done and paying attention in class. But it was always really fun and exciting to write and read these notes. And it was, isn't something that you would necessarily think off the bat was contributing to my literacy journey, but it certainly does to reference the um, Boston Devena article where he, and I will reference this several times throughout the PowerPoint presentation, this article really opened my eyes to all the different ways that we can contribute to our literacy um, journey and how we learn to effectively communicate. There's so many different ways that we do so. And I thought this one was a really cool one to note because it's one of my favorite things is all the memories I have of writing and folding these little pieces of paper to give to my friends and keeping them forever. I love that I have those memories. At this point in my life, I remember being fascinated and totally enthralled and obsessed with music and lyrical music specifically. I love this quote. Here's to the kids who memorize lyrics faster than vocabulary words. And that is very true to the way my mind works. Anything with a tone or a beat or some kind of synchronicity to it, I can memorize very easily. If there is something academically I need to remember, I always try and come up with a little tune or rhyme so that I can remember it in my head because that's just how my mind works. I know that's a common thing, but I thought it was important to reference because it was at this time that I started listening to music as therapy of some sort and also to understand other people's perspectives better and to connect that way through it. And because it is something that you listen to, I think it is an interesting way to view literacy instead of just the reading and writing. It's another um, form of literacy to hear and understand the lyrics and be able to repeat them because you understand them so well. And so at this time, I became very interested in music, memorizing songs, repeating them. Me and my friends would have rap battles all the time. Rap is one of my favorites and always has been. And so we would memorize lyrics and, you know, karaoke rap the lyrics back and forth. And so I thought that was a fun thing to remember. Moving on with juxtaposition to the rap battles, <laughs> the required text that I remember reading in middle and high school were classic novels like The Odyssey, The Crucible, Steinbeck, To Kill a Mockingbird, Romeo and Juliet, The Great Gatsby. The one I remember most fondly and being most interested in would have to be The Crucible because um, of all the symbolism involved within the depiction of the real world events that had occurred years before. And I had always been told by my family that we were distantly re related to the ancestors of John Proctor, which is a main character in the book. And I was therefore very invested in the characters because of that. I had that connection to real life. And um, any book that involved even the tiniest bit of magic or witchcraft or anything like that is something that I could not get enough of. I've always been obsessed with just that realm, that world in general. I think it is incredibly interesting and fun to imagine. I'm fascinated by fiction and living those fantasies in my mind to be transferred to a situation that wouldn't necessarily be one I would possibly experience in my real life is um, something that encourages me to read because it is a feeling that I love to have of being transported to that world. And um, I remember in 10th grade, we read The Crucible, and it was a point where I remember being very interested in English class after maybe not being so interested in the assigned readings for a while because I connected so um, truly to the characters and that storyline and enjoyed reading and dissecting the symbolism within it. I kind of remember that as my first exposure to symbolism and dissecting the material so that you could connect deeper and understand deeper what the author was saying. And as a classic novel written so many years ago, I think it's so interesting that um, it's still something that we reference and use in schools and how um, important it is to read these novels in schools because it really does, you know, it's, it's timeless and 
you can find new ways to connect to the material that may be unthought of before by the different experiences of the students in the classroom. And that's when I remember fondly reading in class with my classmates and being very interested in. Another memory from high school English class that I have would be in 12th grade when we read Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. And um, in class, we analyzed each, each section together of the book and had to create the assignment we had. The final assignment was to create a movie based upon the characters and symbolism with uh, group collaboration. So we got in groups and had to make, I think it was like a 10 minute movie um, relaying the storyline in as in a creative way so to reference all of the key points and to make our own story depiction of this um, classic novel and I enjoyed it so much it was one of my favorite high school assignments because I got to do it with my friends and we got this was before everybody had you know a camera phone so it was, we had to track down video equipment and um, work hard at making you know, video editing wasn't as easy, so we had to really work hard at this assignment to create something we were proud of and then show it to the whole class, played played it for them. We had to make commercials that kind of tied in with what you would see if you were watching the movie, and I just thought it was the coolest way to incorporate multimedia for the one of the very first times I remember in school is um, doing something very different like this for understanding a written word, a, a novel, and just experiencing um, the expression of our thoughts on the novel by using the multimedia um, and the opportunity to be creative with my group members and the collaboration of our different intakes from the story and how we were going to portray it together in this group assignment was something I really enjoyed and hope that I can do in my own classroom is think of new creative ways to engage the students with the material. Like I said, these classic novels that we still read in school, it's so important to find ways to interact and engage the students where they are truly interested and remember these assignments and look fondly, look back fondly on them so that they can continuously be encouraged to read and interpret the material in their own unique way um, via their unique experiences and their their own literacy journey and why you know why and how they think reading is important from the experiences that have been presented to them as far as others encouraging them to read and to expand their um, language and literacy knowledge this way. And in the um, Vasu Devan article um, that I've been referencing about knowing adolescents by engaging with their multimodal, multimodal literacy practices, um, he says that support should include, but not be limited to, a variety of ways for students to demonstrate their learning, opportunities to extend learning outside of school walls, and acceptance of legitimate assessments such as descriptive reviews, portfolios, and student-produced multimedia projects. And this really was what um, sparked my memory of the Frankenstein assignment that we have had and um, that I experienced because it is, like I said, something very important and resonated, resonates with me that as educators, and I know what contributed to this positive experience, I remember, is the opportunity to relay the information outside of just the standardized essay. The um, creativity we were allowed to express and um, the you know freedom to kind of make it our own and incorporate everyone's ideas together and decide on it as you know our group and not be limited to just the standardized essay. I know that um, whenever these assignments would occur and this is the one I most notably remember that I was excited to do the assignment compared to <laughs> not being as excited to write an essay based upon reading of the novel. It was something different and exciting and interactive to do and um, contributed to the positive experience of that assignment. So towards the end of high school, I remember becoming very interested in reading lifestyle blogs on the internet. This is kind of the time when the internet was becoming 
very encompassing and that's how a lot of communication and information was consumed and so it was fascinating to me to read the um the posts that people made from their perspectives and um very interesting that these people could be you know anybody they didn't have to be a published author or anything like that is you know, real ideas from real people. And I was fascinated with reading as much as I could of all of my favorite blog posts. Also, um, this is kind of when Twilight came out, the Twilight books came out. And I think even more than Harry Potter, this became my favorite series of all time. And I know it's not, you know, you get a lot of hate for saying that when you're an English major, because of course there's so many, you know, profound writers and novels out there. But personally, I just really enjoyed being lost in the world of Twilight. And again, sticking with the theme of um, you know, fiction, fictional characters that live in a magic world that, um, that turn into something visual like a movie. I really enjoy those books because it just is incredibly stimulating to my imagination and my creativity and being able to imagine what I think, you know, the characters look like and um, how the storyline goes based upon reading the words and then seeing it come to life. It just makes me so excited. And just like um, all my other favorite series books, I've read these multiple times. I know I'll read them forever and always be so interested in them. So in that case, I um, know this really helped me at this point, re-fall in love with reading books for enjoyment, where I maybe hadn't for a while. I had more been reading on the internet or things like this, but as far as, you know, an author's written published word and how stimulating that is to your literacy, this series really helped me fall back in love with that and reading for fun. So I think it's important to note because at this time, you know, I was kind of reading for school exclusively and not so much for fun. And this helped me dive back in that world. So um, I look fondly back at those memories and enjoy them. And that is going to wrap up my personal journey to literacy uh, from my literacy autobiography. And I hope you enjoyed reading and listening to it. And I appreciate it. Thank you.